And it came to pass, at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. Pharaoh made one last attempt to stop them. But God opened the Red Sea, allowing Moses and the children of Israel to escape. Then the Lord destroyed Pharaoh's army by closing the sea upon them. The Lord displayed incredible miracles before the people to show His great power. God then gave His people laws, the Ten Commandments, to protect them from sin and to guide them in life. But the children of Israel rebelled. Outwardly, they served the Lord but not in their hearts. They soon forgot about the miracles and their deliverance from the land of Egypt. As a result, God raised up kings to rule over them. But even the kings did evil in God's sight. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Then God sent his prophets to warn the people to repent of their sins and serve God. But they rebelled over and over. The people hated the prophets, and rather than repent and serve the Lord, they murdered these men of God without mercy. Time after time, the children of Israel sinned. As a result, God allowed them to be captured and suffer in slavery. Look at us today. We are no different. The whole world is filled with liars, thieves, murderers, and fornicators. We love revenge. We are all under the curse of sin. The scriptures declare, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's see what happens to a sinner when he dies. This man thought he had everything. The scriptures said, And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. After death, his soul is immediately taken to hell to wait for God's terrible judgment. All because he rejected God's love gift of eternal life.
The time is coming. It is called the great and terrible day of God's judgment. When all who died in their sins will be called to appear before the Lord Jesus Christ to be judged. The Word of God says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. When it is over, God will ask an angel to open the book of life, to see if your name appears. The angel will look and say, That name does not appear, Lord. And God will say, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And these shall go away everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The Bible says, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, forever. But God, in His great love, prepared a way for you to miss this terrible place. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves you and wants you to live with Him in heaven. And He made a way for you to go there and miss hell. And that way is through the Promised One, the Deliverer. The Jews looked for Him as their Messiah and prayed for centuries for Him to come and save them. Around the year 760 B.C., the prophet Isaiah said to the nation of Israel, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Satan understood the prophecy. From that time on, Every virgin in Israel was closely watched. Years later, prior to the birth of the Messiah, Israel was once again under slavery to a foreign power. This time, it was the mighty Roman Empire. Rome showed no mercy to the Jews. It was during this dark period that God's great plan of salvation began. When Gabriel, one of the highest ranking angels in heaven, penetrated the earth's atmosphere, the powers of darkness were electrified and instantly recognized that God's timetable was now in motion. Gabriel came to the city of Nazareth to visit Mary, a virgin, 
to give her a message that would change the world forever. Mary was overwhelmed at the appearance of the angel. He said to her, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The Holy Ghost 